Welcome back to my channel. If y'all have been following this playlist, then you know that my husband and I are building a custom house on an acre and a half of land outside of Charleston, South Carolina, and we're documenting our building journey here on my YouTube channel on this playlist. So in this video, we're gonna be sharing our house blueprint designing journey. We just got finished getting our custom house plans drawn by an architect, and we wanna share our experience designing our house plans from start to finish. In this video, we're gonna share the differences between designing custom house plans and buying house plans online. We're gonna share what our experience was like working with an architect to get house plans drawn from scratch. We're gonna share the pros and cons of working with an architect to design custom house plans. And we're also gonna share some of the mistakes we made. So if any of this is interesting to you, then keep watching this video. So the first thing we wanna to touch on in this video are some of the differences between getting custom house plans drawn by an architect and buying house plans online. So we looked at probably thousands <laughs> of house plans <laughs> online trying to figure out what we really wanted out of our house and ultimately our decision was to get custom blueprints blueprints drawn by an architect yeah ultimately we couldn't find anything out of the thousands of, of thousands of plants that we saw online so we basically took uh, a mixture of ideas that we had in our head and also plants that ideas that we saw on plants online we kind of combined them to make what we have now is the house, our dream house basically. All right, so one of the things Lavario kind of hinted at was that when you buy house plans online, you may not get exactly what you want out of the house that you're planning to build because when you buy plans online, that's essentially a plan that someone else designed to fit their needs. And just like when you buy a house, you're moving into a house that someone else built that was perfect for them and you're moving into it and hoping to make it your own but we wanted well we're building a house and in building it we figured that we might as well go ahead and create a situation where we're able to get every single thing we want within reason <laughs> because the options are really endless when you're designing custom house plans so if we know that we can afford a certain amount of square footage we want to make sure that we're getting every single thing we want and maximizing the square footage within what we can afford and the only way we could accomplish that was in designing the plans ourselves so that every single space in our house was really and truly what we wanted there's no wasted space in our home yeah and one big difference is um, between a custom plan and a pre-made plan online is the cost Mm -hmm. You go to the architect and they charge per, most architects they charge per, um, what? Per square foot. Per square foot, basically. And pre-made plans online, they just charge between, you know, like $1,000 to 2000 whatever the cost is. But in creating your plans with the architect, you get to customize every little thing, every nook and cranny of your house. You get the place where you want your closets, where you want your bathtub, where you want doors, how big the doors are gonna be, how high it's ceilings, everything. Every little thing you can think of, most likely you can customize it in the house. But with the plans that you buy online, you really can't customize too many things because it's already been pre-made for you. You would have to go to the architect to get some little thing changed. Yeah, and so that's another thing about buying plans online what Lavario mentioned about going to an architect to get things changed. So when you buy a plan online, regardless, you're gonna have to pay money to get those plans engineered for your city and state and whatever the current building codes are. So that's another reason why we decided to do custom house plans because for us, I mean, obviously getting custom house plans drawn was way more expensive than buying a plan online. But either way, if we spent $1,500, for example, buying a plan online, we still would have had to take it to an architect or an engineer in our city to um, engineer it, to bring the plans up to code for 
the housing house building codes they're current here and we would have had to pay another few thousand dollars to get that done so once we really looked at the cost when, when it really came down to it, it the was, cost it was difference worth, wasn't yeah. as drastic as we thought it was going to be and it was extremely worth it because you know if you're going to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to build a house it may as well be what you want so exactly you um want. yeah so for us the cost difference was worth it we could justify it because we know that every single square footage of our home is really and truly what we want all right so now let's talk about how long it took to get our custom house plans drawn so the process of getting our house plans drawn took about four months and that was just solely just for getting plans on on the paper and communicating what architect what we wanted then it took a whole nother month to get actually engineered to code for our city and just have everything structurally sound for our build so just to kind of explain how the process works from start to finish with getting custom house plans drawn so when we initially met with our architect we came to him with all of our ideas some sample house plans in terms of what we wanted our home to look like and how we wanted yeah, the rooms some of the sample divided. Plans that we had were actually hand drawn plans that were just terrible, honestly. And <laughs> they weren't terrible. Looking back on it, we were very proud of these sketches <laughs> that we had come up with that were not to scale. And on notebook paper, I'll put some clips of our hand drawn um, plans here on the screen. That's but <laughs> when whenever you take the plans to the architect and you hand draw your plans. They're not the scale, so don't be disappointed when they, when architect tells you that can't be done because or it can't work yeah, or the spaces can't be the way you're asking for it to be. Mia was pretty disappointed <laughs> because I knew exactly how I wanted the space, but I wasn't thinking about the space in terms of square footage into scale. So what I was asking for didn't necessarily make sense. So if you're going to come to your architect with ideas about how you want things to look and how you want it to be, base your ideas off of something you found online, like a real blueprint, <laughs> because if you try to draw something out, on notebook paper unless you maybe use graph paper that's the only way i can think or imagine a hand-drawn plan really working yeah, and that's still, yeah it, it still is not gonna be scary like you said uh just bring a plan that you've seen online but also bring with your ideas too but they'll be disappointing when your plans can't can work right because we had this perfect vision for how we wanted our house to look like based on our notebook paper sketches and like he's saying it wasn't to scale so we had to go back to the drawing board and find some actual plans online that looked kind of more like what we wanted and that actually helped the architect more accurately see how we wanted our house divided up and how we wanted the space designed so anyways back to how the process of working with an architect works so we worked with an architect who was like a draftsman and he drew up our blueprints and then of course that took four months of going back and forth with several rounds of revisions um, and in one week our architect would give us his version of what he had come up with and then he'd email it to us then we meet in person the next week to talk over what we wanted to change what we liked what we didn't like and then he would take it back again and work on it some more and change things and make things what we wanted then we come back again and meet in person with a red pen to go over yeah, things we again went through a lot of red pens and white out That's and highlighter. <laughs> <and> highlighters <laughs> That, that was definitely a key to actually editing the drafts that he gave us. That was pretty fun doing that process. It was fun. Going back and forth. Mm -hmm. It was also nerve-wracking too. But. It was very <laughs> nerve-wracking when you know in your head what you want, but it's just not coming out on paper. Um, and then that also taught us a lot about communicating with one another because when both of our brains are like trying to work together to create what's perfect in our mind, you know, like our house is very important for both of us. And so I wanted what I wanted and he wanted what he wanted. Yeah. And so we both had to compromise on some things. And also you just have to really just make a list of your wants and your needs and just look at that list together and see what you guys absolutely need in your house and go from that. Then branch out to you once right right and one thing that we did was come up with both of our top priorities like what are non-negotiables for me and what are non-negotiables for Lavario, and what are some things that we can meet in the middle on communication in that way helped us to kind of get through the house planning process because like as a couple 
in the beginning we got in like a few squabbles and arguments over it because we're both we were both just really passionate about what we wanted out of the house and we both wanted to make sure that we were individually getting what we wanted and so um in the beginning that was communicated in not the best way yeah, but once we, we realized we started our journey in house plan hell so yeah that's what he said it what felt like house plan hell because we were arguing and it just it was very stressful until we decided that okay what are our non-negotiables what are your non-negotiables and what can we meet in the middle on and once we prioritize that then the communication became a lot easier and we kind of escaped house plan hell so it was fun but we really had to work on communication during that process to make sure that we were both getting what we needed out of our home and so in working with the architects we went through i think four or five rounds of revisions oh, yeah. and then after what's on paper your blueprints you know the fun um, pretty drawings where you see where all your rooms are gonna go um, after that then our architect sent those blueprints on to an engineer who did all the drawings that I look at and don't understand like our foundation plans foundation. our roof plans <laughs> um, our site plans our electrical plans all the things that you look at and don't really understand those are all of the things that the engineer does and also a really helpful tip uh, when you're designing your plans is go to like modern homes of mm. different houses around your area, right. like just different developments and you'll be able to see like to scale what, you know, what size room you like, what size island you like for your kitchen, you know, things like that. And also a key is to buy like several tape measures for mm -hmm. you, you know, when you're out in the stores to measure things, just see how can that be incorporated into your plan? When we were designing our house, we went to model homes, even though we're not looking to build a house in a master plan or track built neighborhood, we would go and look in their model homes to get an idea and get a feel for different things that we wanted. So we would be in there like measuring rooms and people would ask us, what are y'all doing? So the last thing we wanna to touch on here in this video are mistakes we made. <laughs> what went well what didn't go well and just some general lessons we learned one mistake we made is we didn't really think about how we we had a, a vision of how the outside would look of our house but we didn't think about how it affects the inside of a house right so really the the main thing you have to do is think about inside out first not outside in because it kind of causes a lot of issues when you want this bump out but you don't really think about how that affects square footage it could add you know 500 square feet to your house but you want to stay at this limit then you're trying to find ways to configure your rooms and your bathrooms or anything like that to fit the outside which kind of really isn't the way you want to design your house you want to design it based on your livable space first then you want to go to the outside of how it looks so i think Anytime you think about building your dream house or building a custom house, the first thing you think about is the curb appeal. What do I want it to look like on the outside? You go on Pinterest or you go online and you find this beautiful home that looks exactly like what you're envisioning. But when you're designing a custom house, you have to think like Lavario said from the inside out, you have to live on the inside of your house. You're not living on the outside. And so you really want to think about how the inside needs to be designed to meet the needs of your family family and how you live and then after you get the inside perfect then think about how the inside can complement the curb appeal that you want on the outside we were so fixed on this photo we saw on Pinterest that was the perfect house <laughs> and how we wanted our house to look and it had the inside of our house all messed up if you're designing a custom house plan before you even think about coming up with a vision for what the outside is going to look like Focus on the space where you live. You only see your house when you pull up to, and pull into the garage every day, you know? We're not saying make it look ugly. Yeah, not that the, <laughs> the outside needs to be ugly or not that it's not important. But think about the functionality of your inside, yes. you know, use it that space wisely, you mm -hmm. know, before you go to the outside and, and start disrupting what's inside. Exactly. So one thing that went well for us, so those were some mistakes, but there are some things that we did our research with that went really well. And this was actually some advice we got from one of my friend's parents who built a custom house. And that advice was to make sure you know how much house you can afford before you start the process of looking for plans or designing plans 
or even thinking about building a house from the beginning. Right. You so don't, you really want to be sticker shop when you you know have a five thousand square foot house, then you take it to a builder and that you can't afford saying, to yeah, build it. You can't afford it. Yeah, there's nothing worse than having a house plan that you're in love with, and then you take it to a builder and they say, oh wow, it's going to be one point two million dollars <laughs> to build this house, and you really can't afford it. Right. And so um, one thing that we did that we're so grateful that we were told to do was to talk to builders around our city and see what the costs to build were you know generally i mean it, all of that is relative to your what you want are you building a brick house a vinyl house a hardy siding house yeah, so are you building on a crawl space too. yeah it depends are you by the water and you have to hurricane proof everything we're on the coast and so it really depends on what part of the city you're in so we honed in on talking to builders that are building around where our land was to see what people even near our neighborhood were building for the cost to build depends on what you want however you can get a general idea of around what it costs by getting some quotes from different builders. That cost was per square foot has really helped us, you know, hone in on what we you know, wanted, but also what we could afford as far as square footage. And then one other thing relating to that that helps if you don't feel comfortable reaching out to builders to ask about cost per square foot prices, another thing you can do is go on Zillow and look at new construction houses and see what those are selling for. So if a builder is building a house from scratch and they're selling it for a certain price on Zillow, then that can also give you an indication of around about what it's gonna cost to build a house in you know this moment if you're gonna build one sometime soon. And one of the main things that we learned during this process was communication is key through this process of you know designing your plans, but also once you go into building, you know, communicating with your spouse about what you want and what they want, mm -hmm. but also communicating with your architect to, you know, put those plans that you have in your head on paper, which is a really, you know, important thing of, you know, communicating exactly what you want. Because once they get on paper, you know, and, you know, everything starts to get built, then it's kind of hard to change things. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, communication is so important. So we're in some custom house building Facebook groups and there are lots of people who say that once their house started to be framed and built, they noticed that things weren't what they wanted them to be. And that to me was just like crazy because I'm like, well, what were you doing throughout the process of designing your home? You know, I mean, if you're not communicating properly and being really detailed about analyzing what the architect is giving you, then you're going to end up building a house that needs lots of changes and renovations in the process of actually building your home. Everything needs to be in writing, everything. Communication and clear communication is very important. Nothing should be left to assumption and then bouncing off of that it's also important to communicate with builders in the process of designing your house plan. So after talking to lots of builders, we had an idea of who we were gonna to use to build our house before our house plans were even done so that during the house planning process, we could send our drafts to a builder and say, does anything here not make sense? Because we're just regular people <laughs> trying to design our house. We're not builders and so we don't know what house plans are supposed to look like. You know, our, we- And also you have to, when you're searching for architect, just choose the best architect. Don't really choose who's cheapest sometimes because that can really be an issue. But also someone who's expensive may not be a good architect either. You have to just look and see, you know, their reviews and also, you know, reach out to people who have, you know, used them before. Because your architect can really make a break, you know, your house planning process because they may have poor communication or they may force you to, you know, do something that you don't want to do in your house. But some architects are really good, which we had a really good architect who, you know, understood. He was very patient. Yeah, <laughs> very patient. <laughs> and he understood what we wanted in our house. Um, and he really helped us out a lot when we just when we were designing our plans. Right. And a builder will tell you if there are any like glaring issues with your plan. Does anything not make sense? In our plan, we had a lot of pocket doors. And so our builder informed us that pocket doors were going to be a little more expensive than a regular door. So do we really want to have that there? Will we rather splurge on something else? You know, just small things like that. 
um, our builder pointed out that our front porch wasn't as wide as it needed to be and so we bumped out our front porch so it would be wider and more efficient. You know, little things like that that as regular people we wouldn't catch and maybe things that maybe weren't important to our architect. Our architect was good at what he does but um, a builder is more in tune with what's really important to the homeowner because they're the ones actually building your home, they're not designing it. And so it's good to have two like outside expert opinions coming in to give you feedback about what's on paper so that when your house is actually built, it makes sense for you and your family and it's something that really works for you and functions well. So. Communication with your architect is important. <laughs> communication with a builder who can give you another expert opinion is important. And then obviously communication with you and your significant other or your partner is also important throughout the process. All right, so in the next video, we're gonna talk about our favorite aspects of our house plan. You guys have seen snippets and bits and pieces of our house plan and photos in this video, but in the next video, we wanna share more in detail what we actually designed. We've talked about the fact that we designed custom house plans, but in the next video, we're gonna actually show you guys what we designed and share some of our favorite features of our custom house plan, why we designed it the way we did, and the things about our home that we're just really excited about. So that's a video we're looking forward to. That is all for today. We are signing out. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and comment a question or anything that comes to mind that you'd like to know more about, about designing a custom house plan. We're more than happy to answer your questions down below in the comments. And then also we're documenting our custom house building journey both on Instagram and TikTok. So I put our handle right here. It's at the Lewis Residence both on Instagram and TikTok. So follow us there for stories and other interesting content if you're interested in following our custom house building journey. All right, y'all. See y'all in the next video. Continue to move onward, upward, and forward. Until next time. See ya.